nafs, the Sufi understanding, part 4. The heart. There is a polish for everything that takes away the rust. And the polish for the heart is the remembrance of that which is. What is heart in fact? Of course, I am not speaking of the biological heart. Mystics say heart is a threshold between two worlds and an entire universe of qualities. Heart is a balance between ego and spirit, fragmentation and wholeness. Also, the purity of heart, in fact, depends on the balance between the outer and the inner and the living and interacting form and living and interacting from the heart. Anyone who has experienced the inner life to a certain extent, who sat in silence long enough to experience the inner stillness of the being behind all apparent noise, is faced with a mystery. Apart from all the outer attractions of life in the world, there exists at the heart of human consciousness something else, something that is quite satisfying, invigorating and beautiful in itself. This is the beauty without attribute. The mystery is not so much that these two dimensions, the outer and the inner world, exist in togetherness. The mystery exists in that the human being is suspended between the two as a space in which both meet. It is as if the human being is the meeting point, the threshold between the two worlds. Anyone who has explored this inwardness to a certain degree will know that it holds a great beauty and benediction. In fact, to be unaware of this mystery of inwardness is to remain incomplete. Al-Ghazali, the formulator of Sufi psychology, explains, There is nothing closer to you than yourself. If you do not know yourself, how would you know others? And one of the hadiths says, Man arfa nafsahu arfa rabbahu. One who has known oneself has known Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of God. Man arfa nafsahu arfa rabbahu. If you do not know yourself, how would you know others? You might say that I know myself, but you are mistaken. The only thing you know about yourself is your physical appearance. The only thing that you know about your inside or bathing or your Unconscious is that when you are hungry you eat, when you are angry you fight, and when you are consumed by passion you make love. In this regard, you are equal to an animal and nothing else. You have to seek the reality within yourself, what you are. Where have you come from and where are you going? What is your role in the world? Why have you been created? Where your consciousness does lie? If you would like to know yourself, you should know that you are created by two things. One is your body, the outer appearance. This dimension is apparent or zahir, and you can see with your eyes and feel as well. The other is inner dimension or bathing. This is the part you cannot see, but you can know with your insight. The reality of your existence is in your inwardness or bathing. However, this remains a major part of your being and unconscious. Everything is a servant or manifestation of your inward heart or inner dimension and your outer expression reflects your inner unconsciousness. According to Sufism, knowing happens in seven stages. These stages 
offer a comprehensive view of various faculties of knowledge within which the heart comprises the sixth level of knowing. Number one, hearing about something. This is what knowing is having a child called motherhood. Second, knowing through the perception of the senses, I have seen a mother and a child with my own eyes. This is the second way of knowing. This is called knowing sense perception. There are five such organs of perception, eyes, ears, nose, tongue and skin. Through eyes you see the form, through tongue you taste, through nose comes the smell, through ears comes the sound vibration and through skin you experience touch. Number three, knowing about something, this is how it happens and what it is like to be a mother. Number four, knowing through understanding and being able to apply that understanding. I have a PhD in mothering and my studies show. Number five, knowing through your doing or being something, I am a mother. Number six, knowing through the subconscious faculties of the heart, it is difficult to put into words everything a mother experiences and feels. Number seven, knowing through the spirit alone. This is much more difficult to describe and perhaps it is foolhardy to try. Maybe something like this, I am not a mother, but in the moment when all separation dissolves, I am you and you are me. The outer world of the physical existence is perceived through the physical senses through a nervous system that has been refined and purified by nature over millions of years. We can only stand in awe of the body's perceptive ability. On the other hand, the mystery of the inner world is perceived through other seven subtler senses. It is these senses that allow us to experience qualities like yearning, hope, intimacy, or to perceive significance, beauty, and our participation in unity. When your awareness is turned away from the world of senses and away from the field of conventional human thought and emotions, we may find that we can sense an inner world of spiritual qualities independent of the outer world. Our modern language lacks precision when it comes to describing or naming that which can grasp qualities and essence of the inner world. Perhaps the best world we have for that, perhaps the best world that which can grasp the unseen world of qualities is heart. And what we understand by the word heart is an intelligence rather than intellect, a knowing that operates as a subconscious level. The sacred traditions have sometimes delineated this subconscious knowing into various modes of knowing. What are known in some Sufi schools are the Latifa or literally the subtleties al subtle subconscious faculties that allow us to know spiritual realities beyond what the senses or intellect can offer. This knowing is called subconscious because what can be admitted into consciousness is necessarily limited and partial. The five spiritual senses are connected to one another. They have grown from one root. As one grows strong, the other strengthens too. Each one becomes a cup bearer of the rest. Seeing with the eyes increases speech. Speech increases discrimination in eyes. As sight 
deepens, every other sense awakens, so that perception of the spiritual becomes familiar to them all. When one sense grows into freedom, all the other senses change as well. When one sense perceives the hidden, the invisible world becomes apparent to the whole and process continues. This happens even in case of those who are blessed with extraordinary intelligence. According to one model, the heart is understood as the totality of the subtle. According to another, subconscious faculties are the subtlest faculties of them all, sharing in all the knowledge of the others. Essentially, however, we can consider the heart a mostly subconscious knowing of a spiritual realities or quality. The heart is the perceiver of qualities. What we mean by qualities are the modifiers of things. If we say, for instance, that a certain book has a particular number of pages on a certain subject, by a particular author, we have described its distinguishing outer characteristic. On the contrary, if we say, however, that the book is inspiring, depressing, boring, fascinating, profound, trivial or humorous, we are describing its qualities. Although qualities seem to be subjective and have their reality in an invisible world, they are more essential, more valuable, because they determine our relationship into a thing. Qualities modify things, but where do qualities originate, if not in an outer world? And is that inner world completely subjective? contained within the individual brain or are qualities somehow the objective features of another world, another state of being? The answer of tradition is that absolute reality which cannot be described or compared to anything possesses qualities or attributes. All of material existence manifest these qualities, but the qualities are prior to their manifestation in forms. Forms manifest the qualities of an inner world. Cosmic creativity is overflowing with its qualities, which eventually result in the world of material existence. Human being is an instrument of that cosmic creativity. The human heart is the mirror in which divine qualities and significances may appear. And the world is the mirror in which these qualities are reflected and known more clearly. The cosmic creativity manifests itself in and through the human heart, which has the capacity for interrupting the forms and events of the material existence. From the point of view of the human being, qualities are projected on things, recognized in the outer world. Things lose or gain importance for us as they are qualified. Things lose or gain importance for us as they are qualified by qualities whose immediate source is the human heart. You tend to like something today as prompted by nature and develop dislikes another time. Remember the ultimate source of all this is divine treasury. A cheap, mass-produced teddy bear becomes an object of love because it has been qualified by the affection of a child's heart. This subject may seem elusive because we are so conditioned to project qualities onto the things and events of the heart that we overlook 
that everything of true significance is happening within us. Furthermore, the qualities that we experience in relation to the outer or the material world also have a reality beyond both ourselves and the things out of world. That which becomes the object of our affection, for instance, is receiving a projection of the capacity for affection contained within the individual heart. Affection itself is a quality that exists in reality itself and transcends both the heart and the object of affection. Another way of saying it is that we live in an affectionate universe and we know this through the relationship between the individual heart and the object of its affection. A mature enlightenment is seeing all these projections for what they are, the heart, because of its nearness to divine tragedy is primary. And the world is the shadow. We need not then withdraw these qualities into ourselves. Because the mirror of the world receiving the projections of the heart has received qualities of the divine source. This divine source, the heart, the outer existence, together form and unify whole.